everyone's Jackal Wolf back in MC Eternal with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Uh, last episode, we built ourselves a potato cannon, which was part of this base defense uh, quest. Uh, we also did the uh, crafting table on a stick and the 16 ladder quest because they were pretty easy to do. And, you know, we wanted the ladder so we can uh, get up to the top of our building. Uh, we've done that. That has worked really, really well. Uh, although... It's a struggle keeping, you know, it full of potatoes, and if it runs out, you end up into situations like this. Interesting thing is both of these are uh, part of the, oh, I can't even remember what it's called now. They're all part of the quests and in the exploration tab, uh, the bounty board, we've got uh, a trollager, which is really, really interesting. Oh, wow. It gets us a sword. So these green hulking monstrosities are considered an abomination by molt, feared by villagers and capable of throwing blocks at tremendous speeds to injure its prey. The sun appears to have some sort of effect on the creature's ability to maneuver itself. So that's how we got it. I, I totally by accident, I went out there to, to properly fight it, but it turned itself to stone. So uh, that worked good. So we're going to collect those rewards there. We'll collect some loot. That is awesome. A forgotten relic. What is that? Bottomless provisions. Ooh, that could come in really, really handy. Uh, what was the other thing we, we got there? And the Nagralite Axe. This looks really, really good uh, as well. I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, and then Bounty Evil Wizard, a humanoid creature who has mastered the arcane art of spellcasting and necromancy, driven mad by its limitless pot uh, potentials, potential. Uh, these powerful wizards will strike down anyone or anything that comes in its path just for fun. It wasn't actually that tough. Uh, I was a little surprised about that, but uh, there's our 75 monies. And how was my inventory? I got lots of room in my inventory here. Uh, loot reward microphone. Interesting. There's an advancement for that. Uh, scroll of identification identifies an unknown spell, a book, or scroll that could come in very, very handy. And then astral diamond, interesting. That is really, really cool. I'm sure we're going to need that for something in the future. Now that's kind of cool. You know, we got those two bounties. I wasn't expecting them at all, uh, so I've thrown them in on this episode just to kind of you know make sure that they get shown somewhere. But those are just uh, completely uh, random. So there's another way that we can go and protect our uh, base. Now it's not. Gonna to be the main thing I work on this episode but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, impending darkness quest which is uh, to craft some uh, stone torches and some lanterns uh, and then we're going to do the make a home a home quest which is really just uh, something we just go and click on here in single player if you were on a um, server this one would make a little bit more sense uh, but it is a good one to get and we need those two so we can go and move on to the smell tree which is going to be the main focus of this episode uh, it's something I've done many times before, but uh, it is super handy to go over it and, you know, just make sure everybody is, you know, fully up to speed on it. So uh, to start, what we need to do is build those uh, torches. So uh, to make a stone torch, we are first going to need some stone rods. A stone rod is simply two pieces of cobblestone in a crafting table uh, gets you four stone rods. We're going to take those stone rods, put them in a crafting table with some coal. That's going to get us our stone torch. Uh, we needed, I think, 12 of them, and we needed eight stone torches just to complete that. I just used all the stone uh, stuff that we had there. I didn't want anything, you know, left over in my uh, inventory. I've already got a storage issue going on in this world, but uh, that is perfect. That is step one. Uh, step two is to make just some standard lanterns. Uh, it is a torch surrounded by eight pieces of iron nugget. That's going to get you one lantern each. Uh, there you go. Quest completed. Impending darkness. We can go open this up and open that up. There you go, we get some monies, and then we get a cheesy cash. Uh, right click to open, sneak right, sneak right click to open all in hand. Hmm, I wonder what it tastes like. Did I really just think that? Yes, you did. <laughs> So uh, cheesy cash is the little uh, thing that we got there. We can go open that up and there we go, marbled cheese stairs. 
Very interesting. Now this has got to be something to do with the rat mod and uh, rats. It is part of the rat. So maybe, I don't know, we got to make a house out of cheese or something. I don't know. We'll have to figure that one out, but uh, that's what we got. Uh, next up though is going to be the uh, make a home, uh, make a house a home, create a team and claim the land around where you want to build. Uh, this also protects you from mob griefing. So I uh, I don't know if it really makes a whole lot of sense in a single player, but if we go and go into our regular crafting menu up in the top, and again, my face cam is blocking us. So what I'll do is I'll pop myself down there. That is perfect. And up in the top corner here, we've got my team and then we've got claimed chunks. So because it's a single player world, I don't have a whole lot of uh, options here. I can work on settings, which, you know, really don't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, or I can leave team. Technically, I'm on a team of one. <laughs> so uh, there's not much you can do here on a single player world. If this is a multiplayer world, you could create your teams and sort of work off of that. Uh, but our next step is to go into our claimed chunks. And what we want to do is we just want to left click on those chunks we want to claim. I don't know if this makes a big difference or not, uh, but let's just go make that a full on four by four square uh, just to you know make sure we, we know what we're doing here. Uh, but that is all well and good. We can open that up and I believe that's what we got to do. That's the best I could figure out on it. But this is just a click and you sort of claim it yourself. We didn't actually have to do uh, anything else here. So we got our quest completed, make a house. We also got a, a future quest there, but that's okay. We'll get back to that in a second. So that gives us 50 monies, a flower terrarium, a peace candle, uh, and a soji door. So these are all really cool items. Really quickly, uh, the flower to area is basically just that. It's just a little jar, uh, but it is really, really nice. Uh, we got the soji door. We've only got one of them, and there is a future quest where we can make more, but basically it is a sliding door, uh, which is kind of cool. We got to be careful we don't click on uh, the crafting table or the bed that's behind it. Uh, so I'm just going to throw that there for now. All I've got is double doors uh, that we require, so that's okay. And then last but not least out of that is the peace candle. Now, uh, if we go and check out the peace candle, a peace candle will prevent natural mob spawning in a three chunk radius around it. There is a peace candle in one third of all of villager churches. So that is really, really cool. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to go and place this down. Now you got to be careful, you know, these stairs and that, uh, and these slabs, uh, you can't place it down on that. It needs a full block to be placed down on and we're going to get rid of the iron bars. And we're going to place it down there. You see it gets lit up and that's going to keep mobs from spawning in a five by five chunk radius. So pretty much that whole area that I claimed anyways, we shouldn't be getting any mobs spawning in, in that spot. So that is good. That is hopefully going to keep us a little bit safer at night. Uh, I will keep the potato gun, you know, loaded and ready to go. And I am going to put something else over there. There is a creeper down there. He must have already been there. You know what? Let's go see if we can hit him with the potato gun. I think he's just out of distance. But you know what? That's only the beginning of what we're going to work on today. The main goal today is to get this uh, smell tree controller uh, quest done. And this is super, super simple. We've done this in a number of different mod packs. Uh, it is nothing different than anything else or any of the other ones that I've played, uh, but it is always handy to go over it. So to make a smell tree, we are first going to need some uh, seared bricks. To make seared bricks, we are first going to need some grout. I am grout is the uh, tool tip on this one. They've changed it up recently, but for some reason, this one is uh, that old one. But uh, to make a grout, you're going to need a block of clay and four pieces of gravel and four pieces of sand. Uh, alternately, you can make a lesser amount of grout at a time if you used a uh, ball of clay and then one gravel and one sand. Uh, that works as well, but you only end up getting, I guess, two uh, pieces of grout, which is fine. Uh, but we're going to go take that uh, eight pieces of grout. We're going to throw it in a furnace. As soon as this is done, it's going to start cooking up some seared bricks. You can see I've already got a bunch here, uh, but we'll just wait for that arrow to finish. And there we go. So there are our seared bricks. Uh, four seared bricks is going to make uh, seared bricks. So this thing gets a little bit confusing when you're talking about it. There is a seared brick 
and seared bricks. So the, the seared bricks is the ones that we want to build with. Uh, for the quest, you need 32 of them. I've got 41 because I know I'm going to need more than that for the build that I want to do. Uh, we are also going to need at least one smeltery controller. This is the brain of the smeltery. Uh, to make a smeltery controller, it is eight seared bricks in a circle in a crafting table. Gets you that smeltery controller. Uh, we're going to need at least one seared drain. This drain is how we're going to get the liquid of the molten liquids out of our smeltery. Uh, to make a drain, you're going to need six seared bricks just on both sides there. For every drain that we have, we're going to need at least one seared faucet. So to make a seared faucet is going to be three pieces of seared brick just in that V shape there, which is perfect. Uh, also, for every uh, seared uh, drain and faucet, you're going to want either a seared casting table, uh, which is just basically a upside down U with the seared bricks, uh, or you're going to want a, a seared basin, now, uh, which is the exact opposite, which is the U shape in the seared bricks. Uh, that gets you the casting basin. Basically, the table will allow us to, um, you know, cast smaller items like the tinker's tools and ingots, whereas the basin was going to allow us to cast like full blocks worth of stuff. So depending on how much material you've got, you're going to want one or the other. Ideally, you're going to want a combination of both of them. Uh, also, we're going to need a seared tank. To make a seared tank, it is a piece of glass uh, surrounded by uh, eight seared bricks. Now, I've already got a couple filled with lava. Uh, what we are using for them is to store the lava, which will help us melt stuff in our seared, uh, in our smeltery. So to fill it up, you would just go to a lava source in your world, or you can actually craft it. It's not as easy as it is in like, you know, say Sky Factory 4 or something like that, uh, where you've got your uh, crucible or whatever, but uh, it is possible to manufacture it. I went down into my mine and I ended up finding, uh, you know, a whole little lava area and I filled up these two blocks like that. Uh, I brought a bucket with me and basically all you're gonna do is click on the, the sear tank, you fill it up with uh, lava. You can take out the lava as well. As long as you got a full bucket's worth, you can take that back out. Uh, be careful. Don't crouch and do it. You'll place it. That's the last thing you want to do. Uh, so you want to go and keep that in your tank there. Uh, that is perfect. Last but not least, uh, this is not part of the quest, uh, but this is something really nice to have for your smell treat. There are a couple of uh, different uh, viewing windows. This is seared glass. It is the cheapest of them. Uh, and basically it is just a really, really nice clear glass that lets you see into uh, your smell treat. You can see all the different metals you've got in there. Uh, there's also the seared gauge. Uh, which has kind of got little hashes on the side, which is okay. It takes a lot more of the glass to do that. And then there's also the seared window, which is three pieces of glass and, you know, seared bricks. So all of these are fine. The seared gauge and the seared window will actually hold liquids if you want. Uh, you could use them to store lava, uh, whereas the seared glass, it cannot store liquids. That's really the only difference. I just want a window into my into my uh, little smell tree there. So that's all we're going to do is we're going to take that seared glass there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down into my little basement here. And this is going to be my seared area. You can still hear it going off. That's awesome. Uh, what we want to do is we want to prep the area for our smell tree. So I'm going to go and take a three by three space out of my floor. And then we're going to go and fill that in with these seared bricks. Now, next up, we're going to start building the wall around it. You do not want to put them over top of your uh, seared bricks here. That is going to, you know, basically waste space for you. Uh, just put them on the outside. We can go all the way around. If you've got a corner like this, make sure it's lit. The last thing you want is a mob, you know, spawning in this area uh, and kind of getting trapped and just, you know, keeping you from sleeping or something like that. So I'm going to come over here and what we're going to do is we're going to place down a seared tank. And this is going to go three high, but uh, for now, we're just going to place down the one. We're going to place a seared brick there, and I'm going to put the controller on top. You can put the controller pretty much anywhere as long as it's within uh, this area. You could actually even put it off to the side. Uh, I like having it in the middle because it's one less block you got to worry about for the whole thing. But I also like having it one up because it's a little bit easier to interact with than if it's down or up a little bit too high. Uh, and then here's where we're going to place our glass. And then over here, we're going to do another layer uh, of bricks. You can put your faucets down on that bottom layer and just have, you know, all the tanks or the, the tables and that in the floor. I'm going to do mine up because there's no reason for me not to do that. But uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to 
built this up just sort of following that plan and when I'm done we'll be right back. Okay guys, so we are back. Uh, as you can see, the controller is not working yet. I haven't made a complete circuit where the smelter controller is. If the smelter controller was down on the bottom, this bottom layer would activate and it would be a functional smelter, uh, but very, very small, just that one layer. If I go and start placing these guys here, you can see it's now lit up. This is good all the way up to three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that up there. We're now good all the way up to four. So this is a fully functioning smell tree. Uh, we can open this up. We can take some iron and I left all my stuff upstairs. Um, we can you know, pretty much smelt any of our minerals in here that we want. Uh, I've got a bunch of iron that I've been saving. And then I also could need a, a little bit of gold there we go so what we're going to do is we're going to go put two pieces of gold in here first uh gold is what you use uh, to make casts i think you can make clay casts as well uh the rest we're going to fill up with that iron this is going to take a little bit longer to melt than the gold gold's fairly soft so it melts really really quickly over here, what we're going to want to do is place either our table or our casting basin. So for the purposes of example, what we're going to do is we're going to go and place the uh, casting table because that's going to allow us to, to craft ourselves a cast. Uh, all we got to do is place a brick of any type uh, on the table. And we also need to add the uh, faucet. We'll go through that there. And you can see we've got our gold down at the bottom. The iron is still melting. It's almost done there. If we come out here, it's all going to turn to iron. There you go. That is now molten iron. We can go in here, throw the rest in. The reason why you want to go through all this trouble to do things like the iron is you actually get double the amount. So for every iron ore that gets put in there, you get two back. So we had enough iron ore in here for four uh, blocks of iron. If we did it through a traditional, uh, you know, furnace, uh, we're going to end up with eight blocks of iron here because we ran it through the smell tree and ended up getting double. Uh, this molten gold, two ingots. Now, if we wanted the iron on the bottom, we just uh, left click it. We want the gold on the bottom. We, you know, left click it. Whatever liquid is on the bottom is what's going to get pulled out here. So we want it to be gold. We're going to go right click that and it's going to fill that up and make ourselves a gold cast. There you go. It, it did use the uh, iron ingot, uh, but that's okay because now what we can do is it's just iron right there. We can go and right click on that. So this is how you're going to end up using your smell tree. You can automate this using like a redstone clock to automate the uh, faucet. Uh, and then just a simple, you know, um, uh, hopper and, you know, chest configuration. At some point, my storage is going to be the next layer down. Uh, I'll have it, anything coming out of here, pumping right into my storage and you know that's going to make things uh, nice and easy but uh, that's going to be it for this one guys let me know in the comments below if you did any of those quests any differently than I did uh, I would love to hear all the different ways out there there are uh, to do all of these quests but uh, if you enjoyed this video please think about leaving a like and a subscribe uh, you can follow me on twitter at jackal wolf also check out the description below there'll be a link to my discord page I would love it if you guys stop by to say hi as well, there will be a link to my Patreon page if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content and you want to support. Stop by, check it out. There are a lot of great perks out there for all of my supporters. But that is it. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.